do you know that if you have started a pig farm that is a mini pig farm and then you are looking to expand this farm you can actually get investors and how do you get investors by writing a pig business farming plan so today i'm going to walk you through the steps in writing a good farming plan that will attract investors to come help make your pig farm a bigger one also Note that the business farming plan is not just for the investor, but for you as well. Because as time goes on, you constantly have to look through to remind yourself of the things that you said you are going to do. Your objectives, which are your primary goals. You have to always remind yourself of the things that you put in place. And then why you even started the farm in the first place. Because sometimes losing focus can make you become reluctant in doing the good things that will help your farm to become the best. Let's get right into today's video. So in order to write such a plan, I have listed some very important or key areas that you have to touch on in order to let the investor know that you are serious about what you are doing and that you know what you are about. So over here I have this. Let me bring it closer for you to see. So we have how to write a big business farming plan. So you have your executive plan, the mission, the company summary, operational requirements. You have your management, operational strategy, marketing strategy, market analysis, and then industry analysis, SWOT, which is your strength, weakness, opportunities and threat analysis, financial statements, risk analysis, and then your potential sources of finance. So I'm going to speak broadly on all these points. So let's get right into it. With the executive plan, you are trying to sell your idea to potential investors. So how do you go about this? You first introduce yourself, you introduce the business, you give a little background history about things you've done previously on the farm, and then you also go ahead to tell them the things that you want to um, bring up on the farm now. And you also talk about what moved you to start the farm. So in all, you are trying to give them information that will get them interested in the work that you have begun. That is the purpose of the executive plan. So let's move to the next one, which is the mission, the vision, and then the objectives. So with the mission, you are trying to talk about the key purpose of establishing the pig farm. Because these are people who want to invest in your farm. So they have to know the reason why you establish their farm. So that if it aligns with what they also want, then you are sparking their interest in your farm. So let's say your key purpose or your mission is to um, become a leading producer of pork meat in Ghana or to become a producer of healthy gills and boars that can be sold to other farms or other producers as well. So then you just did what you want to achieve by setting up the farm. So the objectives to just highlight just simple sentences what you want to achieve so just go straight to the point i want to be able to produce um, enough pork meat to meet the higher demand because rice now we are importing um, some of these products so you want to be able to meet the high demand for such products that can you can just go straight to the point that's the objective so then we have the keys to success too so what are the things that you do to ensure that the objectives or the goals that you have will be able to be realized so you can just state the things that you'll be doing on the farm to make sure that these things become a reality so with this you hit on key areas that are essential to ensure the good health the protection and then good housing for the pigs everything that you do to ensure that these things are in place you list them so those are your keys to success to, because success means everything that you've said coming to pass and without good health protection good housing good water all those things wouldn't be manifested so you hit on all those things as well so with this you can also speak on um, putting in place proper vaccination schedules maybe getting um, a veterinary doctor that will be visiting the farm frequently maybe um, biosecurity measures which are very important you, you hit on biosecurity measures that you put in place to ensure the safety of the pigs as well. The third thing will be the company summary. So it's just a picture of how the company is going to be run. So maybe you can have um, the CEO, maybe the person who started, which is you, and then maybe a farm manager, then maybe a veterinary, then maybe farm workers, maybe four, depending on the size of the farm, maybe three, four. So you just list that over there. That's all about the company summary. So then the point four is the operational requirements. You have to let the investor know why you are setting up the farm at where you are setting it up at. 
So the operational requirements are land and then housing. So for the land, you talk about why you chose that site for um, the pig farm. So uh, for example, maybe the site is close to a source of water. Maybe the site is close to um, a piece of land where you can plant some of the crops that the animals consume. Or it is closer to maybe a road or it is closer to market or something like that. So you write those things down. And then the housing unit too, you talk about whether the housing unit you want to be a simple structure or a complex one, how you want the housing to be and all that, and what you have in place at the moment. The next thing is the management of pigs, that's point five. And for that, you speak about management of piglets from birth till they are weaned off. So with that, if they need good and proper care. So then outline the things that you put in place to ensure that they have this good and proper care. And also the importance of the good and proper care that you are going to give them. It's going to influence the number of live pets. It's going to increase the number of healthy piglets that are weaned off. Then it is also going to influence the performance of the piglets during the latter stages of their cycle. And then also you can add that you can um, you be able to identify disadvantaged and normal piglets. So which ones are the normal ones? The normal piglets are the ones that are born quickly and then they are able to suckle from the teeth of their soul almost immediately and they do not need much help from the caretaker. And the disadvantaged ones are those that take a very long time to be born. So due to the stress they go through during birth, they are born being weak and then they are unable to suckle um, milk from their soul directly. So then they need help from you, the caretaker, to help them to suckle. So for management of the source, during nursing, management of the source greatly involves the availability of water and feed so that they can be able to recover from the vigorous process of birth. So right there, they have to be provided with well-balanced diet as well as clean water every time. So for management of the soul during farrowing, you have to ensure that um, the farm manager is around to the process and then also right after farrowing is complete you mark down the dates and then for the next breeding cycle to be able to mark down the dates so that you can be able to predict or to determine the time that the next farrowing will be due now let's move to record keeping so what is the importance of record keeping record keeping helps to improve on the efficiency of technical and then financial management of the farm which also then helps in taking decisions for the records you keep birth records farrowing records health records where you source the animals you keep the records and then sales of animals to you keep records for that you have to enlighten anyone who picks up the plan on how you are going to be able to select the best breeding stock for your farm because this is very important if, if you select very low performing breeds then you are going to have a problem over there so highlighting on your ability to select good breeds is very important so maybe you take for the boar and then for the guilt you state the characteristics that you think are the best and that you follow in selecting um, the animals to your farm so to select a good boar for breeding you can state that the boar should have no deformity it should have three sets of well placed teeth right before the testicles and then it should be standing upright and for the characteristics of selecting a good guild number one the guild should be from a dam that has constantly produced large and heavy litters also it should have at least 10 well placed teeth that piglets can suckle from a guild should also be long bodied and should be deformity free so let's move on to nutrition so on nutrition you speak a little on why you think nutrition is very important or vital to the well-being of the pigs and then you also talk about the nutritional plan that you have in place for them then you also talk a little bit about the time of feeding the times that you've been feeding the piglets and why you feed them at those times too so now let's move on to feed requirement so for the feed requirement you will speak on your ability to be able to prepare feed for all the pigs at the different stages of their lives that is from um when they are crib feeders to starters to growers then to finishes and even to fatness. So you'll be able to prepare feed for all these ones. Then you state the way you mix the feed and all. Because what is the whole purpose of the business plan? You are trying to enlighten whoever picks up your plan that you have maximum knowledge in whatever you are doing. So let's move on to the operational strategy. So that is the 
means by which your farm is operating. So which people are involved? Who is mixing the feed? Who is feeding the animals? Who is doing this? So state all those lines of activities that are going on on the farm and who is taking charge over them and then making sure that each and everything is done successfully. So now let's move to the production cycle. So what is your production cycle like? Where did you start from? Did you start with pregnant souls or with um, little piglets? Or how, how are you going about it? So you state all those ones too and then give the time frame for which um, they'll move from one stage to the other as well. So now let's move to your marketing strategy. So you've taken care of the pigs, they've grown, the guilds or the souls are giving birth to large numbers of piglets. The piglets are going to become healthy boys and guilds. How are you going to go about marketing them? Do you have an open market? Do you have people that you are going to supply to? Are you now looking into the market? Whatever steps you've taken in the line of marketing, you should state them in your plan. And then whatever steps that you are now going to take to, you have to state them down. So the person knows, okay, these are the measures that you've put in place and these are the ones that as time goes on, you are going to also incorporate. So now let's move on to market analysis. Have you analyzed the market? How are others marketing their product? Are they packaging them? Are they selling them with the live weight? Or how are they going about it? Are they delivering them? So whatever um, thing that is going on in the market concerning the pigs, you have to state everything you know about that in your country because from, maybe from the start you'll be marketing them in your country before thinking of export. So whatever information you have about the market, the demand and then the supply, you have to um, also state these ones in a clear form. Then with this, you can also highlight on how you plan on marketing yours. So maybe you plan on delivering them to maybe cold stores, or you plan on giving them to pork sellers, or you plan on selling them just live like that. So you have to state all the things that you have also thought of on how to market them. So let's move on to industry analysis. So with the industry analysis, you want to speak on how you want to join the flood of farmers that are into pig beef. Maybe the country is importing pig products. So you want to find a way to um, also be able to supply so that to cut down on the importation of pig products. So you can also state that. And then with the industry analysis too, you speak on things that have boosted the industry currently. That is making people go into it or that is making the demand in the industry rise up. So maybe currently people have established um, avenues where they sell just pork meat with maybe fried yam there are a lot of um, venues coming up like that or new avenues such as people using their pork to make pork kebab so depending on the country that you're in and then the things that are going on concerning pig production because you know the reason why you want to also be a supplier because maybe there's a shortfall somewhere so state those shortfalls and how your pig farm is going to help make the situation better in the country so now let's move on to SWOT analysis that is the strength weaknesses, opportunities, and then the threats that are involved with the pig farming industry. So for the strength, it includes everything that is helping to boost the pig farming industry in the country. So for example, over here in Ghana, there are breeding centers where you can get a um, very healthy source from. And also there's a tendency for you to be able to increase your capacity, like producing more pigs. And also there's readily available markets. So you can list several strengths that the pig farming industry is having. So for the weaknesses, it can be um, infectious diseases. So infectious diseases that um, attack the pigs and then can lead to their death or lead to deformities. Also some religious beliefs are against the consumption of the pig meat. Another weakness is also the cost of feed. And then now let's move to the opportunities in the pig farming industry. So the opportunities are that aside producing or rearing the pigs, you can proceed to process them into finished products such as sausage, such as the pork meat. And also another opportunity is the fact that you can expand the business. So you can set up one in, let's say, in the central region. And as the one in the central region is picking up, you can set another one in Sinyane. As the one is picking up, you can set another one up in Accra. So several places and then you have the tendency to continue expanding further. Another opportunity is that you can even plant the feed. So some of the crops, you can plant maize, you can plant soya beans as well. Then you just buy your fish cassava. and then get some maize bran. You can plant cassava, you can plant potato, you can plant popo, 
you can plant pineapple mm -hmm. and every other thing that animals will be able to eat so this will help minimize the cost of feeding now let's look at the threats that the pig farming industry is facing so we have cases of misinformation by media so i remember this time there was um, an outbreak of disease that sent everyone to panic so people were just avoiding pork meat entirely and then also there's a case of theft where someone can break into your farm if you do not have very strict security measures someone can just break into your farm and then do away with some of your pigs so now let's speak on the risks analysis and then subsidizing measures that will help control these risks so now with the case of disease outbreak the subsidizing measure will be proper biosecurity measures and also ensuring that you have a veterinary officer that visits the farm frequently so when it comes to the high cost of feed the subsidizing measure will be the plant crops that you can feed the pigs with and this will help lower your cost of feeding and then another thing is with the theft so with theft your subsidizing measure will be to provide strict security measures so let's speak on financial statement so this is where all the money issue is at over here you have to ensure that you state each and every little detail concerning what money will be used for so one we have the cost of building so you have to tell the type of structure you want to build or the structure that you have in place that you want to improve on so then the amount of money that you need to enhance the structure or to build a new structure and also the next one is the cost of breeding stock so the number of pigs that you want to use to start the farm or the number of pigs you want to bring in to improve on the farm because mind you the business plan is for someone who has either already begun or now wants to begin so it's either you want to improve on the farm or you're now starting from the base you get it so another cost that you encounter is the cost of feeding so you have to make calculations concerning the feed that the piglets will consume for a certain period of time also you have to factor in the cost of veterinary services and then you have to also factor in miscellaneous like petty things that you purchase on the farm as well so for revenue and expenses you have to speak on after how long will money be generated because the investor is bringing in money and he's looking for money so he's interested in after how long will he start making profits or getting a um, payback on his money that he has invested so maybe after a year you would have covered for all the expenses and maybe you start making profit so state how long it will take before profits start coming back in so with the payback period you have to give at least a very close value an approximate value of the money that will be getting back on their monies invested so let's speak on the last but not the least thing that is the potential source of finance where do you want to get this amount of money that you need to run the farm from so either from sources such as um, loans from um, people that want to invest and then maybe from friends from families so those are the areas that you can acquire the money that you need to run the farm from so you write this plan put it in place and then you can issue it out to these areas or to these groups of people also note that the business farming plan is not just for the investor but for you as well because as time goes on you constantly have to look through to remind yourself of the things that you said you are going to do your objectives which are your primary goals you have to always remind yourself of the things that you put in place and then why you even started the farm in the first place because sometimes losing focus can make you become reluctant in doing the good things that will help your farm to become the best so you also need a copy of this business farming plan by you all the time so that as time goes on you look to remind yourself okay yeah i want to accomplish this set timelines for yourself as well so that as time goes on whether or not you hit these timelines you know that there's somewhere that you want to get to and you continue working towards that i'll see you in my next video it's bye for now